Brian, uh, Bob Lazeri, Tony D'Angelo, uh, are you there? Hi, guys. Great talking to you. Thanks so Good much, evening, Brian. Brian. Again, uh, we've we've told our audience we've had world championships and gold medalists in here, and it's uh, it's truly an honor uh, to have a Hall of Famer in here. And, and and first of all, congratulations on your election last year, uh, and thanks for joining Very us much tonight. So. But, yeah, no uh, problem. And uh, Brian, first of all, I met you at the Gold Key dinner last year, uh, and uh, that was a pleasure. And uh, it must have been. Uh, Really, an honor for you to accept an award in your home state. Tell us what that gold key uh, meant to you, and coming back to Connecticut for an award like that. Well, it's always interesting at the end of your career, you know, when you look back, and uh, at the time, you're so focused on the here and now, and winning the next game, and getting through the next practice, and you know, what can we do to be better tomorrow? And uh, all of a sudden, you're done, and uh, you, if you're lucky enough to go to events like the Gold Key Dinner and you, you go back and you start to think about uh, the amount of people and uh, when you're in growing up in uh, grade school and, you know, I was in Cheshire, Connecticut and you go through into uh, high school and then into, uh, you went to two years of prep school and you move on from there and how many people that, uh, you know, helped you along the way. So to be able to go back and uh, be able to recognize some of those people and be back in Connecticut and kind of gives you one of those moments where you step back and just say, wow, you know, it uh, was quite a journey. Yeah, and then you get the feeling in the room, Tony, when we were there about uh, just the pride in the Connecticut people and uh, one of Connecticut's own receiving an award like that. And, of course, Hall of Fame for was sure. to come after for that. Sure. But uh, for our folks at home, uh, Brian Leach, 247 career goals, 781 assists, played in 10 All-Star games. Tony, 16 years, of course, with the Rangers, uh, various awards and achievements, the uh, Norris Memorial Trophy, uh, a great award, uh, Defenseman of the Year yes. uh, a couple times in the NHL, won a Conn Smythe Trophy as a playoffs MVP in 94, which we'll get to. But, uh, Brian, back in, uh, going back to the Cheshire days and Avon Old Farms, you won a state championship in baseball at Cheshire, uh, and you set a school record for strikeouts as a pitcher at Avon Old Farms. Was it? Uh, did you ever have any uh, qualms about either playing hockey or baseball, or was it a no-brainer to go into hockey at the time? Well, I guess I wouldn't say it, uh, it was a no-brainer, but uh, I wasn't the smartest kid, but I knew that a lot of kids played baseball, mm -hmm. and a lot of kids can throw the ball hard, and there's a, certainly a difference between pitching and uh, throwing the ball hard, and uh, I certainly wasn't at the level of, of players that I saw in the major leagues and that were entering the major leagues. And hockey, to me, um, the difference between baseball and hockey is that uh, I looked forward to practices in hockey, and in baseball there were a lot of days where I uh, dreaded going out there because you stood out there while batting practice went on, and there was a lot of downtime in hockey when you're out there. You're always moving. You're involved. Uh, it just seemed to go quicker uh, than baseball practices. And uh, so for me, it's just hockey was always the sport that I gravitated towards uh, for some of those reasons. I loved playing baseball. I loved uh, taking the mound or playing shortstop and being a part of the games because the slowness that you have in practice in baseball uh, kind of ramps up the emotions in a game when you're playing because between every pitch you're trying to stay ready, you're trying to stay in the game, and uh, same between when you're at, at, at bat. So uh, I love both games, but I think overall when I thought about it, I said that hockey is the, uh, the one that I really would like to pursue and see where it goes. Obviously it went far. Uh, you made the right choice. Uh, a rookie year with the Rangers back in 88, Brian, 71 points. Uh, a defenseman rookie record, Tony, of 23 goals. Uh, did you ever think you'd last 18 years in that rough NHL, Brian? No, I remember when we came in that uh, everyone used to talk about 10 years when I was uh, just starting out. Everyone said, if you can get 10 years in, everything after that's a bonus. And, and certainly the game changed a lot from when I first came into the league. When I first came in, players were coming to camp out of shape looking to get uh, in shape in training camp and uh, guys would feel bad and see guys throwing up during wind sprints <laughs> over the boards and right. be like, wow, this is a tough training camp. <laughs> and it wasn't but five years later that every guy that came to camp was in great shape or were working with personal trainers and uh, didn't need training camp but just to try and impress the coach.
coaches and make the team, but they are already in tip-top shape, so it changed in a hurry from when I came in there. And then uh, once you're in the league, it started to uh, you start to look at it like if I can stay in here, there's a chance to prolong my career if I keep my body in shape. And uh, 18 years later, uh, obviously, the, all that work paid off. Uh, Certainly did. You're watching Monday Night Sports Talk here on CTV 14. On the phone with us, uh, Connecticut's own and NHL Hall of Famer, Brian Leach. Tony, question for Brian. And, Brian, good evening. It's a pleasure uh, to have you with us tonight. I, uh, Thanks, Tony. Um, thank you. And I'm curious about something because you were an Olympian and we just uh, finished watching the Winter Olympics, which largely was played with uh, your contemporaries of a later period. And uh, what uh, what is your sense of that, you know, professional players in the Olympics? Well, I always looked at the Olympics, even when I was uh, an amateur, I was lucky enough to play in 88, 1988 as uh, an amateur when was still uh considered kind of an amateur, certainly in hockey, but in other sports too. But when you really looked at the different sports, it really was the best of every country's athletes competing against the best in their uh, perspective, uh, respective sports. And I always thought, wouldn't that be great for hockey? And they did it in some Canada Cups every three years. And they had the world championships every year, even though not every player could participate in it because of the playoffs, but I, you know, I always thought it would make complete sense to have the best NHL players play in the middle of winter, uh, regardless of where they were from against each other. And when they finally made that decision to me, I thought uh, it was the right decision. I think when I think of, when I always thought of the Olympics, uh, I always thought it was the best against the best. And I think uh, when you look back at 1980, um, certainly made a huge impact on me. Um, looking back on it as I was growing up. But uh, to me, it was such an upset, and they were such an underdog team because basically they were playing professionals, and uh, I thought it was a bit unfair. But I always thought the Olympics should be the best against the best, and so for me, I think it's the right decision. And speaking of 1980, Tony, uh, Ty Babylonia, who was on our last show, our, our uh, you could see that uh, you'd see that interview at MondayNightSports.net right now. But uh, back to your Rangers days, Brian, 1992, uh, one of the best feats I've uh, come across, Tony. He became the fifth defenseman in the history to record 100 points in a season. Uh, Brian, was that a year you were asked to become a little more offensive-minded, or just uh, did things just fall in place naturally that year? Uh, can you just ask the last part of that question? Sorry. Oh, I was just I'm wondering, a, uh, yeah, if you, in 92, when you recorded the 100 points, was that a year you were asked to uh, become more offensive-minded, or did it just happen uh, naturally? No, you know what, the, th the biggest thing about that year was is that my play was no different, mm -hmm. but uh, one of the unusual things that happened that year is our coach, uh, Roger Nielsen at the time, kept myself and Jeff Bukaboom. Uh, I would say 80% of our shifts were with Mark Messier's line. He played with Adam Graves, mm. and then usually with Tony Amante, or they moved some different wingers in there. But the, it made a huge difference with your familiarity with each other, uh, your approach to who was out on the ice. Uh, Mark Messier would come over to me at a face-off if we were against the other team's third or fourth line and say, listen, you're going to have to pinch in here. We want to trap these guys in the zone. We don't want to let them out. And those little things added up to, you know, I would say at least 20 to 25 more points throughout the year because mm -hmm. the amount of pressure and uh, the ability for us to play together that much for one season uh, made a huge difference because I, I did nothing different uh, for a lot of other years. My approach never changed, but uh, your chances go down because you're playing with different lines. Mm -hmm. You might be out there uh, in a defensive role against the other team's top line with your checking line, and a lot of things uh, change. So that year, uh, point-wise, it all came together offensively for sure. And as we talk to Brian, we're looking at a collage of pictures of Brian and in his former Ranger days, uh, even a picture of him when he was with Toronto. With least, Some great yeah. shots, uh, especially one where he's in the midair there, Tony. But uh, <laughs> some great ones. Uh, again, 1994, the magical uh, Rangers season. Uh, they ended the 54-year championship drought, Brian. 
beating Vancouver in seven games. Uh, you scored 34 points in the playoffs, just, just, just amazing. And that's when he was awarded the Conn Smythe yes. Trophy. Uh, Tony, uh, obviously to this day, Brian, it's got to be the highlight of your hockey career. Uh, maybe you can just, for our viewers, give them an idea what it was like hoisting that Stanley Cup. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it's, a, it's a, a long way to get there. and You know, when your career is done and you look back, uh, I've played with a lot of players that have won multiple cups, some that have won zero, but uh, some that have been in the finals and not been successful. But that was my only time in the finals in my uh, entire career. And when you look back, uh, you couldn't feel, you know, I feel so fortunate to say that I had one shot at it. Uh, we won it in seven games, you know, in New York City to end a 54-year drought. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of emotions that go into it. I know for a fact, the first one that I think about is, is the fatigue and the relief, you know, mm -hmm. that you've won it and it's over and you are completely beat up by the end of uh, the two months and you look around and, you know, New York City never thought they were going to see a, uh, they hoped, but they, they never thought they'd see a championship there for the Rangers uh, in their lifetime. So there were a lot of people and it impacted uh, way beyond the five years I'd been playing in the league, the, the four years. You know, there's people that tell you about uh, the tickets that got handed down from their grandparents to their parents, and they're all raised mm -hmm. to, to follow the blue shirts and to be Ranger mm -hmm. fans. And to be on that team and be a part of that was uh, quite a special feeling and something that, that as, as a player, uh, it was very... Uh, fulfilling, uh, very you know, it, it makes you feel satisfied for that feel for that season. Great sense of accomplishment, but it, it's certainly grown over the years mm -hmm. when you get to talk to people who it impacted, and, uh, the importance it was in their lives, and how long they'd waited for that. And to be on that team is a very special thing. Monday night sports talk, your March twenty second edition. On the phone with the great Brian Leach, Tony. And, and Brian, I, uh, you know, I think back to 1994, and uh, I was watching the Rangers in the early 70s, and they were kind of like the heartbreak kids. So I was watching this saying, I hope you win, I hope you win, I hope you win. Well, thank God you won. What is it like with a player in the Stanley Cup playoffs as far as like just like uh, going through everyday life as far as like walking out in the street and trying to keep your equilibrium and just, uh, you know, things that might be going on at home. I've always been curious about that. You know what? You're very sheltered from that because your, your total focus is on uh, practice every day and the game every day. Certainly we read the papers and you'd flick on the TV and, and watch what was going on. So you knew opinions either way or what the storyline was or uh, the ups and downs, but really there was no walking on the street. I mean, it's a, it's a tiring grind, and you went to practice and you came home, and uh, I wasn't married at the time. I had no children, so it was just come home and, uh, you know, maybe go to a movie and right back up to the room and then mm -hmm. uh, get some sleep and you're on to the next day or you're traveling to the next game and you're at a team meal that night onto the morning skate, play a game, you know, practice the next day, do the media. So it's a very uh, sheltered two months where you're right uh, in the same routine every day. And, you know, once you get past that first round, you start to think about the possibilities because the first round is just as tough, if not tougher, as the Stanley Cup final. And Major you get grind. through round one and mm -hmm. you're like, wow, we just got to get through this and we're in the final four. And you just keep... Uh, thinking about, you know, the possibilities and you focus on the task at hand and just keep moving one step at a time. Now, Brian, you were named uh, Ranger captain. Uh, well, you were the captain from 97 to 2000 after Messier left. Now, was this something you uh, felt very comfortable with? Uh, I know, obviously, very big shoes to fill, mm -hmm. but it surely didn't affect your play, ag again, as you won the Norris Trophy. But uh, what was it like being captain in those years where things fell off a bit, but not your play did? <clears throat> well, I was extremely disappointed that they didn't resign Mark. Mark left as a mm -hmm. free agent, and we had talked about it. And Mark is basically, uh, you know, the guy that I... Uh, always point to as the biggest influence on my life besides my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, once I left home and became a professional, 
Mark Messier has had the biggest influence on my uh, life on and off the ice because of what a great leader and person and friend that uh, he's been to me. And then on top of that, uh, the year, his last year of his contract, we were having trouble scoring goals. We were losing a lot of close games. Back then, a close game was 4-3, to three, you know, 3-2. to two. Mm-hmm. Uh, There wasn't a lot of one nothing, 2-1 games, but we still couldn't score enough goals. And Mark had scored 20 goals, I think, that year and was our second-leading goal scorer. And they got rid of him and added players that didn't even have uh, as many goals as him. And I was very disappointed um, from a hockey standpoint that they'd taken a leader out of the locker room, a uh, productive center off the ice for us to score, and a guy that had brought the Stanley Cup to New York after 54 years and And even if his play was not where it was four years ago, it was still as high as anybody that was on our team at the time. Mm. So uh, I I really thought that it was a bad uh, hockey move as well as a personnel move and was extremely disappointed. On the flip side, as he left in the middle of the summer Mm -hmm. and there was a void of the captaincy for five weeks or so before it started, and they had called me ahead of time and uh, as camp approached and said, we'd like to name you captain. And, of course, I was, I couldn't be more honored, and I knew, Tonight. regardless of whether I was captain or not, the challenge that was going to be ahead of us and my responsibilities were going to increase. So I was not uh, worried about that responsibility or anything. I was definitely disappointed that he wasn't going to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but being a captain was a, was a great honor, and... Um, I did the best I could with it. And like Mark said, he goes, the biggest thing you can't do is try and be somebody else. Um, Mm -hmm. You have to be the person you are. People look up to you because of the way you play, the way you practice. And when you say things, they will listen. That's what you've got to remember. There's going to be a lot of times that people are going to ask you to try and be somebody else, but that's uh, not who you are. So I was very honored to be in that position and very proud of it. Uh, unfortunately, that was kind of the beginning of uh, the Rangers' decline after reaching that uh, point in '94. Yeah, yeah, that stretch '98 to '03, no playoffs or yeah. whatever. But I know you took losing very personally. Uh, I was reading some quotes that Messier uh, of Messier about yourself, Brian. Uh, he said Brian would take losing personally, put himself on a line every night. He'd do whatever it took to put himself in the position to be at his best every night, practice very hard, obviously. Uh, I guess the biggest, uh, the best thing that came from Messier was uh, said, I, I never play with anyone who cared more about winning than uh, Brian Leach, which uh, that's pretty high praise. It's quite a uh, yeah. question. Yeah, and you know, as far as uh, Brian, a lot of our fans would like to know what you're involved with these days. Well, I would say I have no uh, full-time job besides being a dad. Uh, That's, you know, yeah. I, I've got a, uh, a nine-year-old uh, boy, uh, a six-year-old girl, and a four-year-old boy. So mm-hmm. certainly uh, very busy in their lives. But then uh, I do a little bit in New York. I do a few games a month uh, for MSG, doing the Ranger games and the pregame uh, during the games and post-games. I got the luxury of being able to help out uh, in charity nights uh, like I am tonight with uh, friends and mm-hmm. people that I have not been able to do as much with before. And uh, that, those are pretty much the things that uh, are keeping me busy right now. There's There's been some unique opportunities that uh, people have come to me with um, and asked me to be involved, uh, certainly with hockey and uh, I said, no, it's, uh, it's not the time right now, and I'm enjoying being at home. And the kids find me to be uh, uh, important at home, and that makes me feel good. So right now I'm, I'm saying no to uh, any opportunities and just enjoying my time, uh, time away from the game. Now you surely right. deserve that, and uh, we're in our last couple minutes with Hall of Famer Brian Leach. And, and uh, speaking of the Hall of Fame, we have to bring that up. Uh, Brian, uh, elected last year. Uh, I know reading uh, about your quotes and your spe- about your speeches, you've been very humbled by uh, being elected, uh, along with Iserman, Brett Hull, Tony, mm-hmm. Luke Robitaille at the time. Very emotional time for you. It, it had to take you back uh, when you were up on that podium, Brian, taking you back to the early years in Cheshire, I would think. 
Yeah, it, it does a lot of things. I think obviously having uh, the Hall of Fame being in Toronto and the ceremony there is when you land and you're there for a few days beforehand and you're doing all the uh, press and the different events, is you realize how important hockey is to a lot of people and how special it is to be in the position that you are. And sometimes uh, being in the U.S. and, and being removed from uh, that type of uh, – outlook the hockey that some people have um you kind of forget you know how lucky you were uh obviously i've i've never looked at at hockey in any any other way it's given me everything in my life but uh, to be put up there it kind of gives you a very uh very intimidating uh again obviously like you said it's very humbling Hmm. um and there's no way to say thank you to everyone you just try and say i enjoyed Mm-hmm. Uh, I was never pressured to play hockey. Uh, there was no one said that you, I was never thinking of quitting. I always played it because it was fun. And my coaches always did a good job of keeping it fun. And uh, the reason I took losing so personally is because how much I enjoyed being around my teammates. And I never wanted to let them down, being one of the guys that was on the ice for more minutes or one of the guys that was uh, played a huge part in uh, being responsible for winning or losing, so all those things kind of come through, and then you got to get get up and give a speech in front of uh, a lot of uh, past Hall of Famers and uh, your peers and your friends and family, and so uh, it's quite an emotional uh, ride, but one that I'll never forget for sure. Well, uh, we're just about out of time, Brian. Uh, I'll just end it by one more qu- uh, quote, Tony, from Messier, who said uh, Brian Leach is a Hall of Famer not only because of what he did but because of the way he did it. Uh, if Brian is not in the Hall of Fame, then there shouldn't be one. Uh, again, the and ultimate we've confidence. We've certainly been honored here tonight to have Brian. Uh, Brian, again, uh, I know you, you uh, took time out of your busy schedule from a charitable event to do this, and uh, we've been trying to get you on uh, since the goal key of last year. Uh, it was a pleasure doing it. Uh, I will be in touch with you. I, I can't thank you enough. Congratulations for thank all you you've so done much, for Brian. For the state of Connecticut, and, and uh, we wish you and your family continued good luck personally. Yeah, thanks, guys, and uh, good luck to you. It was a great show. Thank you so Thank much, you, Brian. Take care now.